We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence toward the Lord, I would like the ones who can stand up, I would like to invite you to stand up. I'm going to read Psalm, Psalm 87. We're going to read from verse 4. Psalm 87, verse 4. 87, 4 onwards. <laughs> Thus says the word of the Lord. I will make mention of Rahab, Rahab and Babylon to those who know me. Behold, of Philistine and Tyre with Ethiopia, this one was born there. And of Zion, it will be said, this one and that one were born in here, and the Most High himself shall establish here. The Lord will record. When he registered the peoples, this one was born there, Selah. Both the singer and the players on the instrument say, All my springs are in, in you. Lord, we praise you before your face, all everything that we have done so far. And ask that with your reward may bless your people, your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Your church may be seated. The word speaks about Zion. And Zion, as we know, is a mount on Jerusalem, known as the Mount of the Temple, Mount Moria. It is where it established and founded there the Temple of the Lord and the seat of Jerusalem. And the text says that the Lord takes great pleasure in Zion. And the Lord has established in Zion there his house and his dwelling. In Deuteronomy, he says that he would choose a place in the land to be his habitation, inhabitation. And in the times of Solomon, God confirms the place of inhabitants the place for the, the construction of the temple of the Lord, which was Mount Moriah and Mount, Mount of Zion, Zion, and was the place where Abram and his son, son Isaac went up in order to sacrifice to the Lord. And as they were going up to the Mount, Isaac, the son, asked to his father, the wood, the fire, and the the knife is here, but where is the lamb for the Holocaust? And the father answered, The Lord will provide for himself the lamb for the Holocaust. And later on, even John the Baptist, when Jesus goes to be baptized, he points out to Baptist to Jesus and says, Here is the one, the Lamb of God, that takes the sin away from the world. And send, and so that the Lord, he loves Zion. He established Zion. He founded Zion. And the word of the Lord says that, and the text says, the, says this, that glorious things are said about Zion. So people, they publicly, they speak. They used to speak in the past. And they exalted that place, that location, that city. That temple that was built for the adoration and for the praise and glorification of the name of, of our Lord, our God. And when we read in the Word of God and the songs that we sing, many of them exalt Zion. My land, I desire to see. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful is the new Zion, the new Jerusalem. So then he the Lord says in the text, he speaks about it, that amongst the ones that knew Zion, that knew Jerusalem, that knew the temple of the Lord, that know the Lord, the Lord says that amongst all the peoples that passed through Jerusalem, that knew Jerusalem, that, had, that were in contact with the God of Israel, here he mentions a couple of nations or a couple of people. 
and amongst the ones that know me, I will, be ma I will make mention of Rahab in another translation. It says Egypt, and, but we are going to use here what is written here, Rahab. Rahab is no wants to know wanted to know the Lord. It's a person that had no life, had had a life. He, he didn't walk in the path of the Lord, but one day he made this covenant and agreement with the Lord, with God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and the God of Isaac, the God of the time that was established, the temple that was established in Jerusalem, and his covenant, his alliance was an identification that was on the on the on the window as a string of uh, a red string mention, making mention of the blood of Jesus that purifies us of every sin and make us into a new life because whoever is in Christ is a new creature and everything has been made new and when the Lord comes to an individual the Lord Jesus comes to an individual called Nicodemus and Nicodemus asks how can I uh, do what can I do in order to be born again and Jesus said whoever is born or if you're not born or the water and the spirit cannot have the eternal life. So Rahab, she had an experience with the Lord and she had a life that was transformed. She was a woman that lived in, in Jericho, inhabited in Jericho. And that city was a cursed city, but the Lord Jesus, uh, the Lord God transformed her curse into a blessing because she made a covenant with the Lord. So from that moment forward, she stopped belonging to a nation, a city called Jericho. From that moment forward, she was born into a new city, the city of Zion, the seat of the great God. And that's why the ones who know me, I'll make mention of Rahab. So if we place Egypt in a few translations, because Egypt knew the Lord, the signs, the wonders, and the miracles that the Lord has operated in Egypt, the, the ten plagues in Egypt. The Lord operated in that place. If we also look to the Philistines, the Philistines, they knew the Lord. When they stole the covenant, uh, Ark of the Covenant, he brought a, a curse to them. And Z uh, Samson, he destroyed the temple of Dagon, who was a temple of the Philistine. So they learned about the power of the Lord, the wonders that the Lord did in his mi the midst of his people. And if you look at the people of Tyre, Tyre and they used the wood from Tyre for the construction of the temple of the Lord. And also, the Bible speaks about Ethiopia. How many of you remember the queen of Ethiopia? Ethiopia, the, the queen of Shabbath, went to visit Solomon. And there she met the Lord. And she was born again. From that day forward, she received a new identity, a new life. And the individual, when we go back to the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, the individual went to Jerusalem. He didn't understand anything. And Philip comes to him and makes him understand and to know the Lord, a eunuch of the Queen of Candor from Ethiopia. They also, we can say, the place of birth changed from the moment that they learn about the God of Zion. And the Bible also says, my brethren, that all of those were born there. And detail is this, it is about a new birth. Those peoples that I just mentioned here, Egypt, Babylon, Philistine, Philistia, and Tyre, and Ethiopia, they were all enemies of the Lord. They were enemies. They com combated the plan and the project of God. And then in 1 Peter, it says the following, the people which was not a people of God, now they became people, the people of God. 
and out when pick up John, the ones who were not born of the will of the flesh or the will of the man, but of God. So those are people that were born. They stopped being from Ethiopia or they stopped being Philistine uh, from, from Babylon. They stopped being from Jericho. For now, belonging to being born again into a new place. This one is born, born where? Born into the project, project of God, into the seed of God, to the temple of God, into the presence of God. So we see that Jerusalem has a very important meaning. Why is that? Because it was in Jerusalem that Jesus died for the salvation of all the people, tongues, and nations. For the reconcile into a body all the nations. When we, when we pick up revelations, where they came from, they came from the tr Great Tribulation and washed their garments and whited them out with the, lamb of, the blood of the Lamb. There are people of every tongue, tribes, and nations because they were born, they received a new identity. In the words of the following, this one is born there. So it's a statement. And the people there in, in the past were enemies of the Lord. They were far away from the Lord. There is going to come a moment in which they, there came a moment in which they learn about the Lord and were born again. And we are part of those nations that one day were born into the presence of God. We were born into Zion. We received, we received a new identity. I was born in Brazil. I was, I'm Brazilian. A few were born in America. They're Americans. Others in Ethiopia, Greece, Greece, Japan, Chile. And what is the advantage of this? What is the advantage of, of, of those things for the kingdom of God? Maybe being born in America has a couple of privileges or advantages, right? I was born in Bahia in northeast of Brazil. I'm very proud of it. But what is the advantage of being born there? But how about being born in Jerusalem? What is the advantage of being born in Jerusalem? When you're born into a place, you become part of that place. So the ones who are born in, inside of the project of God, they are part of the project of God. And here the Lord is saying that these, they were born here. The Lord is speaking about the location, the location of our birth. One day we were born in, through the presence of the Lord, through the blood of Jesus. One day we received the project of God in our lives. It, it, established, it was established in our hearts and now we begin to have a new identity. We live in a new land, another nation, another kingdom we belong to. That's why Paul says that he's in a, an ambassador. We are ambassadors because God is now working for us because now he's no longer representative of Israel. He's a representative of God. And we are also representative of, of these kingdoms because we're children of this kingdom. Because one day, the Lord produced, generated in our hearts <coughs> His project, His desire to live in Jerusalem. And He said, this one and that one were born in here. It's so interesting that for the, people, for the other people, He says this, this, this. But when He speaks about Zion, uh, He says this and that one. When you speak about a person, this individual is because he's close to you. But when you speak of that individual, he's, he's far away. So God was showing that for Zion, or in Zion, the ones who are in Zion, even the ones who are close, who are in fellowship with him, with him, as well as the ones who are far from God, they are not walking, they are those who are far away but are walking the presence of God, they are already part of the project of salvation because God was pleasing to God to choose. For, because election comes from the Lord, was elect according to the pre-knowledge of the Lord, 
and the ones who are close to the Lord, walking with the Lord in Zion, as well as the ones who are still far away, they all, the Bible says and states that they are already children of Zion, and they were born in Zion. Why is that? Because before we were born, the Lord had already provided all the way back a plan, a project of God to rescue our lives through Christ Jesus all the way back. The Lord had already chosen you. The Lord has elected you in order for you to be children of Zion, to inhabit in this holy land, in this heavenly Jerusalem. So this one and that one were born in here because the Lord is not a, a Lord from near, but He is from afar. God operates in every place, every land, tongue, and nation because He chose us, He elected us for us one day to be in His house and in His presence. And He says, And the Most High Himself shall establish he, her. And Jeremiah says, The Lord does it. The Lord established this in order to, to establish His name. So we see that Lord Creator, and He formed and he established a project for you, my brother and sister, to meet each one of us so that we may be born, so that we may have this identity to be children of this kingdom, of this na nation that the Lord has set apart for our lives. So then the Lord making, when the Lord will record, when He registered the peoples, this one was born there. So, but the Lord is going to, when He describes the saved, He's not going to say, oh, this one from Minas, this one from British Generator States in Brazil, oh, that one is blonde, that one, the one has blue eyes. That's not the description that the Lord is going to make. The description speaks about an identity. So when God looks to our lives, He sees in us an identity. When He examines, He analyzes our lives, making it, the description is analyze. So he says, oh, this one was born there. Why is that? Because the plan, my project, which is my son Jesus, is present in his life. So that sister, she was born there in Zion because my Holy Spirit is operating in her life on her behalf and to her benefit. And he's guiding this brother and sister into my presence. So he sees that. The Lord looks and contemplates our lives and he knows that we belong to his kingdom. When he describes the people, he say, this one is born there. So it's interesting that when he speaks about those nations, we are reminded of that individual that was in Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the other individual, Daniels. Uh, according to the opinion. Well, those individuals were in Babylon, but they were not from Babylon. When they departed, were taken captive, but they were from Jerusalem. The children were taken away from Jerusalem. They went to Babylon, but they were born in Jerusalem. And there is a promise of the Lord that says the following, Believe in Jesus and you'll be saved, you and your household. Many children were born in Jerusalem. They had an experience with the Lord. They walked with the Lord. They praised the name of the Lord. They went up to the house of the Lord, but they are distant. But they were born in Jerusalem. A approach of God continues present upon their lives. And it is interesting, my brethren, that from Babylon. Also, also, it says when the people was there, the people, they were not, they're not happy. According to the days of Babylon, we w would sit down and cry. Babylon had rivers that would quench, but it would not quench their thirst and their answer to all their needs. 
uh, uh, trees. Uh, it's good to produce shade and even for med medicine, but will not heal. The wound, it would not heal the the wound in their hearts because the anointing of the Lord was not there. The anointing of the Lord is here. There is anointing in this place, not in Babylon. The spiritual situation that they were going through was very difficult because the harps, so the, their soul was hanging up. There was no praise, there was no adoration. There's no glorification to the name of the Lord. They had the medicine, but it was a medicine for Babylon. They had water, but it would not quench their thirst. They were, their throat was dried up. That's why they said, if I forget about you, Jerusalem, may my tongue get stuck to the roof of my mouth. If I do not prefer Jerusalem as my greatest joy, so once they asked the Jewish what Jerusalem means to you and he answered look Jerusalem is the dream of our dreams and here my brethren the brethren were there with the harps uh, hung up and it is interesting that the people of Babylon the ones that had, had had destroyed them. They wanted the ones who were born in Zion to sing songs about Zion. That's what it, how interesting that is. The ones that destroy us, sometimes they want us far from God, far from Jerusalem, to sing a song about Zion song of Zion needs to be sang inside of Zion. The instrument, which is the servant of God, needs to be used in Zion, in the house of God, in the presence of God. How can I sing this song of the Lord if the land here is not my land? If this kingdom is not my kingdom? If his king is not my king, how can I sing this the song of the Lord in a foreign land? I do not belong to this place. And so, my brethren, that's why the Lord says the following. If you're in Babylon, whether you're in Babylon or in Egypt or, or in Tyre, but they were born in Zion. They are born in Jerusalem. They have a commitment. Those are the ones who praise me. They glorify my name. Those are the ones that have an identity. And it says the following. Both the singers and players on instruments say, all my springs are in you. The Bible says that the ones who are dead, they don't praise the name of the Lord, but who, we who are alive, we praise the name of the Lord. And here, the singers and the players in, on instruments, they recognize that the fountain is in the Lord, the spring is in the Lord. So my inspirations, my desires, my plans, my dreams. So then we go back to the Lord's Prayer. May your will be done. My desire is to do the will of the Lord. So all my springs are in you. So they sing this and glorify the Lord with this because they recognize that the best place to be is in the house of the Lord. It is in the presence of the Lord. Like the psalmist said, I rejoice when they tell me. So the people of Babylon, they were they were sitting down and crying. But in Jerusalem, he, he said, I rejoice when somebody told me, let's go to the house of the Lord. I will feed at your doors, O Jerusalem. So it was a desire, it was, was a joy of being in the house of the Lord to praise, to glorify, to thank the Lord for all the blessings, for all the benefits that he has done to our lives. So we are in the month of October. 
the month of dedication, the month of the the fe feast and adoration and gratitude to the Lord. What am I going to give to, to the Lord for all the benefits that He has done for me, for all the founts, all the inspirations, for everything that has done in my behalf unto my benefit, for this identity, for this birth, for this kingdom, for my life being in His presence. The Bible says that the singers and instrument players, they, they sang, All my springs are in you. All my joy is in you. All my praise is in you. All my life is in you. And this is a special month for this because the Lord made us be born in Zion. The Lord gave us an identity because we have a land, it's not America or Brazil. Because we are citizens of heaven. Because one day we'll be in, in, in heavenly Jerusalem. Praising the Lord with uh, thousands of his angels. Saying, holy, holy, holy is the name of the Lord. to God. The church will stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise our name. Our land is a new Jerusalem, Lord. We praise the Lord. For this hope, Lord. Soon we'll be there, Lord. Praise therefore in the name of Jesus. My bread. Tyrus, uh, Tyrus, Egypt, Ethiopia, and all the ones from other nations, they had their citizenship changed 
so they could inherit the benefits of eternity. And that's what the Lord has done to us, has done to our lives. Has changed, he has changed our citizenship, has given us a new place of birth. We are not, we're not born of the flesh or of a man. We are born of the promises of the Lord. We're born because one day the precious blood of Jesus poured out upon, for, upon our lives so that we could be a new creature. The Lord has shown a new family, uh, actually a family, and this family is in need of a blessing of the Lord. This family is thirsty. They need at this moment in which they are living, drink of the water of life to quench their thirst and answer to their needs. In Babylon, Babylon, there was a river. But it was not enough to quench the thirst of the servants because the thirst of the servants in Babylon, they, they, they thirsted for the Lord. My, my soul thirsts for the living God. And when we are in the presence of this living God, all our thirst is quenched. And that's what the Lord wants to do to this family tonight, especially. The Lord wants to quench the thirst of each one who are here. The, also, the Lord has shown a woman and this sister. She had a, a disagreement in the family. And when we get upset, it's normal, it's natural for us to make uh, hasty decisions. And the Lord has shown that she's about to make a deci hasty decision. This decision is going to harm her, it's going to harm her family. And the instruction that the Lord is giving to this woman, especially, is that she may be able to forgive whatever happened that caused this disagreement. And the word of the Lord instructs us to forgive everyone, and especially the ones from our family, from our household. Maybe there is a problem between the husband and wife and children and those things, you know. So we need to forgive. Because Jesus says, if I don't forgive, if I don't forgive, the Lord's not going to forgive me, right? Forgive my faults in the same way that they, that I forgive the ones who has, uh, has that's, that's against me. So don't, don't allow me to be fall into temptations. And the Lord does not tempt anyone. The enemy tempts us. So we need to forgive the one who has... Uh, cause a disagreement to you the Lord is going to bless you Amen
Deus, pelo novo nascimento que nos concedeu, Senhor Deus, pois estamos, ó Pai, na Tua presença, pelos nossos nomes e dos escritos no livro da vida, louvado seja o Pai, o Teu santo nome, pelo nosso resgate, meu Deus, da Tua presença. Queremos Te louvar, glorificar o Pai a Ti, pelo Teu povo. Glorify, Lord, for your people, for churches gathered here, we ask that you may receive them into our throne, all our gratitude. Lord, give us a week of peace and blessing to, by you, Lord. Deliver your people, your church from infirmity, from the evil, from diseases, and also recovering the health of each one of the servants that may be infirm in your, in their house, in your house, Lord. Special Pastor Romildo, bless him for a complete restoration of his health. Bless your people at home in peace, and we we'll praise to you in the name of Jesus. In your name we say, the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. The staff has come to its end. I'd like to remind the brand that we are in the month of dedication. Next week this is going to be fasting, right? From 0 to 9 or until the end of the service on the Tuesday, we're going to have a seminar in Brazil geared towards the women, but there is a holiday. I know that everyone works here, but as far as possible, if you can participate, the women, it's open uh, through YouTube. Amen. Pastor Neil sent a message just now thanking the brethren that prayed for his recovery from the surgery that he has done. He submitted to her appendicite surgery. It was a, a video laryscopy. And, and they make those little three holes. And thank goodness he came quickly to the hospital. He did, this, he did the surgery, everything went well, and now he's recovering at home. He asked to, to to tell the brethren that whoever wants to visit, the doors are open. So let's continue praying so that in the next weekend he may be here so that we can together glorify the name of the Lord. So this next service is, is through, through the Zoom on Wednesday and Thursday um, service in presence here. Saturday and Sunday at 7.30 on the present, uh, service in presence to all peace of the Lord and uh, on Sunday morning, Sunday school, so that we can, oh, on Monday we have a study at 8 o'clock so that we can work on that, the questions, amen.